Hi everyone, Angus Campbell here, Sunday the 8th of February. And we're back onto the A70 Lightning now, uh, having uh, picked up the uh, relined and rebored barrels from uh, Wards Engineering in Rugby, and they've done an absolutely super job. So you can just see uh, the top, top flange of the liners, these are flanged, to, so that's obviously a different uh, additional insu insurance insurance to uh, to prevent them uh, from slipping. Not that it'll be required, but um, yeah, they've done a, a super job and also uh, skimmed the uh, top surface as well for the mating surface for. The cylinder head we did find actually it was a bit low on this side so uh, I'm glad we did that normally you don't uh, expect the uh, the iron barrels surfaces to deteriorate um, which they do on the head sometimes the uh, the center section usually gets a bit low on the head but anyway yeah done a super job on, on these and there's uh, there's the bottom end a little uh, a little stepped so uh, that might be a bit of a challenge getting the uh, getting the rings in. We might have to think about some uh, slippers for the rings. But anyway, very pleased with it. And uh, the first job is to uh, just smarten up these now. The uh, the barrels conditions are very are very good. No cracked or broken fins. Just needs a bit of a coat of paint. So um, I've just been uh, preparing these. I haven't got a, a blaster, unfortunately, and I'm not going to put these in the uh, in the ultrasonic cleaner. We'll just give these uh, a good rough up with uh, a new wire brush, and then we'll paint them up with some uh, some gloss blank uh, high temperature paint, just with a with a fine brush, and they should come out all right. So. That's what we're going to do first, and then what we've also got to do with the pistons. Now, um, when I picked these up, I did uh, have a long discussion with Richard at Ward's Engineering about the fact that um, he said these pistons are, you know, within such a, a very small t diameter tolerance that it doesn't matter which way around we insert these. So they're not labelled, they're not labelled up, left or right. And they're in very good condition. So these are brand new standard A70 A70 pistons. So I think that's uh, 71266, that's right. And actually they're stamped up as well. 71266. However, one of them has got a slight bear on the lower edge of the piston. So we'll just need to... Uh, Address that. Come on out. Blimey. Nearly dropped it, nearly had another one. Yeah, there we are, just there. You just see it, and there's a bit on the other side as well, I think. Yeah, there we are. So we just need to dress that very, very lightly. And then we should be away. So we'll do that, and then we'll paint the barrels now. Um, as was forecast outside, it's actually blowing a gale and wet, but it is quite mild, so it's a, it's a good day for painting, so we'll get that done, uh, and I'll bring you back once we've uh, done that. Okay, there we go, piston skirts uh, cleaned up, and uh, they slide in there nicely now, and uh, barrel fins all, all well prepared and cleaned up, and uh, given um, a liberal coat of... Uh, High temperature gloss paint, um, ensuring that we get all the way to the base of the uh, the fins and the barrels themselves. So we'll see how that dries up. That's going to take a while to dry. We'll see how that dries and uh, determine then whether it'll need another coat of paint. But uh, I wouldn't have thought so. But let's see what it turns out like uh, 
after uh, a few hours of curing. Right, a couple, couple of days later, so the uh, the paint has cured really well and uh, with full approval it was in the utility room in the house in a warmer location just to uh, to cure a bit and uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with the way that's come out. So what I've done in the meantime is just make sure then that uh, I've cleaned off uh, any sort of overstrokes of uh, paint from the top surface and also made sure the bottom surface is uh, mating face with the crankcase is, uh, is all cleaned up and also the uh, cam follower guide block that's all tidied up too. So we're ready to uh, to put the cam followers in. I've uh, got brand new cam followers as uh, none came with the bike and the retaining circlips. I know that's going to be a pretty pretty fun job getting down there. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it yet but I'll probably need some little, some little sheathing tool to uh, push that over the end it's not focusing sorry but um, that looks like that could be fun and games but we'll do that job next and then in preparation for putting the pistons and barrels on then I've uh, cleaned up the pistons and the rings oiled up the rings cleaned up the gudgeon pins all those up and check that they slide in really nicely now, which they do. They're really stiff getting them out. But that's because they're all gunged up after years of storage and any original preparation that was uh, on there and baked on there for years. And uh, we've got the new circlips that came with uh, the pistons and gudgeon pins as well. So these slide in really nicely now. So we're all ready to go. So first job we'll tackle is uh, getting those in. And I'm gonna need to have a think about that. So I'll bring you back sh shortly. Okay, when I can get the light right, there we are, done. Yeah, it wasn't too bad a job at all actually. Um, with the barrels sat flat on the bench, then the uh, cams are, retain, uh, are in the retainer and uh, are a sufficient height. Uh, the stems are sufficient height to enable you just to uh, Gently seat the circlips in the groove, just and uh, it was just with a couple of uh, flat-ended screwdrivers, one on each side, and they're not very tight at all. They're quite loose because uh, all they're there for is to retain the uh, cam followers from uh, dropping out when you're seating the barrel. Um, after that, then obviously they uh, they sit on the cam. So that's that job done. So now we'll go over to the bike and uh, we'll install the pistons in preparation for uh, seating the barrels. Okay, so that's the uh, pistons fully prepared now. So we've got uh, gudgeon pin circlip in on one side, gudgeon pin well, well, well oiled up and moving quite freely on the other side on, on both of these. They are symmetrical and therefore they can be uh, inserted either way around. There's no marking, markings on them otherwise. And uh, as I say, they're, they're perfectly symmetrical. I can't find any differences at all in them. Um, what I will do though, while, while we're at it, while we're here, I'll just check um, the workshop manual. Okay, nothing in the manual about a uh, particular way around that these should be fitted, just that um, if you are stripping and rebuilding an engine and using the same pistons then to put them back the same way around on the uh, connecting rods which is uh, understandable, but still with new goods and pins, etc. So I think we're, we're good to go. So what we'll do next is uh, finish prepping the rods, etc. So uh, all we've got to do here really is uh, oil up the rods, but also uh, remove this uh, protective packing as well. And then we'll stuff the, uh, the cavity with uh, rags because obviously um, we've got one circlip on each piston to fit once the gudgeon pins are in and that's usually a bit more awkward to do 
with less room to play with and uh, they can go flying all over the place so let's try and avoid that. Okay pistons on the rods, circlips in, um, they were a pig to get in but uh, we got them in in the end. Good news is though they're very snug and tight and uh, well seated in their groove so that's good and I've uh, just got a couple of um, as you can see long screwdrivers across there now to act as support so we can now uh, seat the barrels on. Uh, the ring uh, the ring gaps are uh, staggered on the pistons ready to go so I'll put a bit of oil um, on the tops of the pistons on the base of the barrels and we'll, uh, we'll gently ease the barrels on now. Et voila! Job done! It took me about an hour to do that and that's because as the barrels have had new liners pressed in then there was no uh, chamfer on the end of the liners to assist with the ring seating into the bore. So I did do a bit of uh, dressing to assist that and then just had to be very patient in uh, gently easing the barrels down as I was constantly manipulating the rings to ensure we didn't get any ring, ring damage. And uh, it was slowly but surely and uh, moving a little bit at a time, one side and then the other, and eventually uh, the oil rings went in and, and down it went and the, uh, the motor turns nice and freely at the moment. If I uh, just turn it with a, a spanner on the uh, on the end of the uh, the rotor up there, it turns fine. In fact, um, I've got a uh, I've got a shifter here, so we can just demonstrate that. I think. Yeah, there we go. moves nice and easily and that's the whole motor going there including clutch and everything so looks good nice big dome pistons and uh, we're then ready for the head now I'm not going to say too much in this episode but heads I've got three so this was the one that, that came with it. I don't know if it's original, but it's got huge lumps of fin missing uh, and has generally been bashed about. Um, I did uh, find another late head uh, with a 3 8 drilled holes at the back there, but again this one, I think, has got fins missing somewhere. Uh, yeah, it's all chewed up at the front. So we could make something out of that. Um, I've got another one here that's actually got the uh, the rock cover on it because I was just test fitting it. But this is an earlier head. So. This one would need the rear two head bolt holes drilling out. But the other thing though is, which has caused me to, to determine that I'm not going to use it, is because um, obviously the, uh, the later heads also had beefed up rocker cover studs because obviously the rocker cover also acts as the, uh, as the head study. And the earlier heads have uh, have got smaller smaller studs that don't screw so deep either. If you'll notice up on an earlier head, there's the, there's the stub for it's been drilled for the screw. On a later head, these have been beefed up big time. And I remember my uh, original first British bike, which was a '68 Lightning, with this head, and in fact that had a problem whereby uh, it cracked here and it was and was leaking. So I've decided, although this head is good in that um, 
it's clean, there are no fins broken. Would need rebuilding, just like all of them. I've decided I'm not going to use that, and I've got another head on the way, which uh, does have all its fins and is a later head, and that will be a lot better, I think, as well, all, all told. So, uh, a massive scrap, really. But obviously quite a few components, so I'll strip all this lot down and we'll concentrate on the head and uh, considerations around the forum again when um, the, the other head arrives, uh, which will be a few days yet. So, we'll leave it there for now anyway. Uh, been a bit of a struggle, but uh, some more progress uh, on the old Lightning at last, and uh, I'm very pleased with those uh, barrels. Um, Water engineering have done a great job on those and uh, they really look the part now and uh, basically brand new on standard standard bores. And we'll leave it there. Thanks very much for uh, watching everybody. Thanks for any interest, comments and uh, subscriptions. And I'll see you all again soon. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye bye.